Hello, everyone. My name is Pascal. I'm just going to quickly outline the various tools in Rhino that deal with the concept of filleting. There are probably half a dozen or so commands that involve fillets. Some of them are surface, some of them are under the solid menu, and I'll just quickly explain the difference between those two and just outline the commands themselves without getting too much into the uh, specifics of the various options that are available, which we'll uh, uh, cover again in the future. But the various commands are under the surface menu, fillet surfaces, and then under the variable fillet and blend chamfer submenu, variable fillet surfaces, variable blend, and variable chamfer. Uh, we covered how rolling ball fillets are handled uh, in a previous episode. In this case, we're going to look at the actual commands that use that concept and uh, to actually generate the surfaces. So the first bunch we'll look at is under the surface menu, and the most basic filleting command that we have is fillet surfaces. And if you start that command, you can see that there is a radius available and then some other options which we'll, for the moment, ignore. But we do want to set the radius of the fillet, and that'll be, in this case, 30. And what fillet surf does is it asks as input two surfaces. So it doesn't care, as some of the tools under the solids menu care, about joining information or ev whether these two input surfaces are even touching each other. So you will look at these two surfaces here. They don't even touch each other, but Rhino will be able to generate a rolling ball fillet between the two, like so. Okay, And again, when it's done, it's all just plain surfaces. It doesn't uh, do any joining. Uh, in this case, it did a nice job of trimming back, but even that you can turn off and just have it build the surface. Okay, So that is the basic fillet surface command. Under the surface menu, there's also the variable fillet surfaces command. This guy is a little more complicated in that it doesn't want to participate if the surfaces don't intersect. So in some ways, this command is much more like the solids fillet edge command. It requires that it can find an intersection between the two surfaces that you're inputting. So if I give it this red and this blue, it tells me, nope, no can do. And on the command line, it says filleting failed. Make sure input surfaces intersect. So. Let's find a set that does intersect, like these. And you can see here they touch. So let's try that again, variable fillet surfaces. And here, now in this case, the whole command is a little bit more complicated than fillet surf because it doesn't just do it. Because it's a variable, it wants to know, it wants you to give it more information, like how big a radius do you want, where the handles should be. These handles are what determine the radius. So I'm going to first set all to 30, just like the other fillet. And I'll turn preview on. You can see that this whole process has a lot more steps to it than just the fillet surf. And then I can set, let's say, 20 here and make a tapered fillet. And if I hit enter, then it'll generate that tapered fillet. So I had a 30 here and a 20 here, and it made me a nice tapered fillet. Again, the options that are available on the command line are fairly dense and complex, and we'll cover those in some detail in the future. The other two commands that are related to variable fillet surfaces is variable blend surfaces and variable chamfer surfaces. These are almost identical to fillet surf, except that the surface that is created is different. In other words, the interface, the finding of the rails, these edges, is identical. It just builds a different kind of surface in between. And those are, uh, instead of a tangent rolling ball that creates the surface, when it's a blend, well, let's set this to 20 just like the other. When it's a blend, the cross section of that surface is no longer an arc. It's a G2 or curvature continuous surface. Uh, so I don't know if it's very clear here, but it's not a true arc when it's a blend. It's a, a, a G2 rather than a tangent surface. And that's really the difference. The interaction with it is identical. And the other one that I want to show you here is the chamfer uh, works again the same way. As far as user input goes, but it makes 
a straight surface between those rails. So finding those rails is identical. It just builds a different kind of surface in between. All of them are useful. Probably by far the most commonly used is the fillet, variable radius fillet, but just be aware that they're all available and are handy in different contexts. Okay, so those are the surface tools. The solid tools are under the solid menu, as you'd expect, and under fillet edge. So the blend and chamfer variations are identical to the surface ones. In other words, they'll build a G2 blend or a chamfer rather than a, a rolling ball fillet. But finding the rails uh, uses the same rolling ball technique and it just creates a different surface. So we'll look at fillet edge. Uh, fillet edge doesn't take two surfaces as input. It takes an edge, or I should say it takes edges. You can, you can give it any number of edges. So in this case, and you know, we'll make a slightly more complex one in a moment, but in this case, these surfaces are joined, and fillet edge requires a joined edge. So if I go to the solid menu, fillet edge, and I pick on this edge, I get no action. It won't light up. It won't give me any feedback just because there is no joined edge there. However, here, it lights up that edge, and I can continue to pick different edges, by the way, right? I could pick one over here as well. And again, I'll do set all to 30 just to keep things consistent. And Rhino generates the fillets. The big difference is that under the solids menu, Rhino understands the join information of the original input object, and it keeps things joined. Okay, so it trims and joins the thing to maintain a consistent poly surface. Now, as you may know, there are times when that breaks down. There are difficult filleting conditions where the joining and trimming may fail, but generally Rhino will generate the fillet surfaces, and that's a whole different ball of wax to figure out troubleshooting on these, but that's how uh, filleting of edges basically works. And I'll just make quickly make a box here so that we have more edges uh, to work with. And I'll start fillet edge again. And here you can see that I can pick multiple edges. And when it's done, it actually figures out that corner as well. Right, so I pick these three edges that come together and it builds the three fillet surfaces that we expect plus this transition surface here. And just to reiterate, the surface menu tools do not understand this join information. So if I go to fillet surfaces from the surface menu and pick two surfaces here, you'll see that it interacted nicely with the two surfaces I gave it. It trimmed back, but it didn't join. Right? It doesn't have any idea about joining, and furthermore, it doesn't have any idea about other surfaces uh, that are involved. So it didn't know, for example, that it should trim off this corner here. You'd have to do that later by hand. So both of these sets of commands are very useful. It's nice to kind of keep track of which of those you're uh, going to use at any given moment to accomplish the fillet that you want. And typically, I can say that most often you use both. It's usually a combination of both. Uh, but that's a, a quick overview of the available filleting tools in Rhino. Thanks for watching.